Hello, this lesson is for my college biology students to review the diversity of life. All right, let's move on to protists. Protists are the first group of eukaryotic organisms. They're kind of the link, the, the evolutionary link between the prokaryotes and the eukaryotes. And uh, the evidence seems to indicate at this point that the archaea are more closely related to the eukaryotes than bacteria are. But either way, it's one of the groups of protists were the first eukaryotic organisms to evolve. Most of them have mitochondria uh, and other intracellular membranous organelles. Most protists are unicellular, although some are colonial, some are multicellular. So they also bridge that unicellular to multicellular gap. Most of them live in aquatic or moist environments, and they have a varied ecology as well. Uh, some are photosynthetic, like the algaes. Others are parasites. In fact, it's a polyphyletic group. They have multiple unrelated ancestors. We just don't really understand the origins of the protists. So any eukaryotic organism that's not an animal, plant, or fungus, we just throw into this group called protists. So they're often classified by their metabolic or structural similarities rather than phylogeny. However, we do know that they're ancestral to the other eukaryote. So here's one example of a phylogenetic tree, and notice the dashed lines indicate we really just don't understand that how these are related. So lots of questions still to discover at this point. So here's some example protists, uh, euglenas, ciliates, paramecia. Those are very common in water samples, pond water. Algae, lots of different kinds of algae based on, classified based on what type of photosynthetic pigments they have. Diatoms, they have little silica shells. Dinoflagellates, also found in the oceans, uh, often are bioluminescent. Giardia is an example of a uh, protist that uh, causes intestinal disease. And I didn't mention amoebas, which could also be on this list. So you don't have to know, you don't have to remember the examples of protists. What I'm trying to point out by this is that there's a very large variety of different protists. And they do have a big economic and ecological impact. They're the foundations of lots of food chains, uh, especially the producers, the phytoplankton, and then the zooplankton often eat the phytoplankton. They're very important in all the oceans and in freshwater environments. In fact, some people estimate that the photosynthetic protists produce as much as a third to a half of all of Earth's oxygen. So most organisms are either indirectly or directly relying on protists for food. Uh, some of them are parasites, others pathogens. Now we move to the fungi. Fungi are multicellular mostly. They have chitin in their cell walls and they're heterotrophic. But they obtain their nutrients not by swallowing them like animals do. Instead they use what's called extracellular digestion, which means they secrete digestive enzymes into their environment, break down complex molecules, and then absorb the smaller nutrient molecules. And that makes them great decomposers but it also makes them very difficult to kill because they can secrete enzymes to break down whatever poison you're trying to poison them with. They also reproduce sexually and asexually, and the majority of their life cycle is haploid. So let me explain what I mean by that. So if we start with a mushroom that's a diploid organism, meaning they have two copies of each chromosome in their cells, they go through meiosis to produce haploid spores just like our cells go through meiosis to produce haploid eggs and sperm. So you can think of these spores as little single-celled eggs or sperm, but they germinate and they grow up into a multicellular organism that we're going to call a mycelium. That just means a fungus body. Now, they're haploid. Each cell in this organism is haploid, but we're going to say it's a minus strain and a plus strain because we really can't identify male or female fungus. But eventually, a plus and a minus strain meet together. The fungal cells are called hyphae, so we can say you know some of those opposite strains of hyphae meet together and fuse and become diploid. Then immediately, they start to grow these, these diploid fruiting bodies, or mushrooms in this case, which starts the cycle all over again. So the majority of their life cycle, which is underground that you don't see, is this haploid stage. There's really five main groups of fungi. The water molds, some don't consider true fungi. In fact, most biologists consider them a type of protist. Then other than that, the imperfect fungi 
have never had sexual reproduction observed in that group. Now, most biologists consider that they probably at one time did have sexual reproduction and have lost it, or it's just never been observed. Other than that, they're classified as uh, types of molds, cup fungi, and mushrooms and bracket fungus. So just remember that those are the five major phyla of fungi. Fungi are important ecologically and economically be because they're decomposers. Many are pathogens of plants and, and animals. And some are used in medicines. In fact, the source of penicillin to begin with was a fungus. They're used in research, and they also are important in producing foods. For example, mushrooms, also cheese flavorings, soy sauce, or several foods are produced by fungi.